Testing, testing, one, two, three. What's the time? It's Pivney Pokan time. What's the time? It's Pivney Pokan's time. Here at Epiphany Poker Productions, we've got some high quality stuff coming on. I've uh, gone the extra mile and actually looked at the hands that I'm going to review this time. I know, crazy. And they're pretty fun. I, I picked, I, I just clicked on seven random ones and they all turned out to be pretty good apart from one of them which I had to close. So uh, kudos to Boom Player for kind of having that meritocracy thing where the more views it gets, seemingly the better they are. We start off with, how can this be a hand though, Epiphany? I only see you playing 12 and a half big blinds with five three offsuit in the big blind. Oh, we're going to see a flop, I see, makes sense, yes. And there is a concept to be learnt from this. We can bet when check to. That's one concept. So when he's limping, obviously, we don't have any ace x. We're going to be shoving ace three off. You know, the worst of the ace x, ace two off, whatever. Um, we can have, however, a bunch of deuce x where he can't have any. When he decides not to bet the flop, sometimes that's aces. That's always a worry. You gotta just be okay that sometimes it's aces. A lot of the times it's not. A lot of the times it's just check something like queens or some some crazy hand like that. Decides to go for the old check rizzle. At this point I'm like, fuck, it's aces. It's aces, damn it. But I'll go for the old float. And I think the cool thing at this point is that unless he thinks that we're doing this with 5-4 off and 5-3 off um, and 4-3 off, then or four three suited, etc. Then he might he might just think that we only have a deuce. And it's very, very feasible that we could have a deuce. But obviously it still makes sense that we could float. So given that and given that he can also have aces, I'm in for the old check back. This is in the hot one six two in two thousand and sixteen, so I'm I'm also kinda of guessing on a what I was doing. River Thrizzle. Amazing. You know what gets there? Five four. He goes for the old small bet, and at this point I think he probably has ace king. I don't really know what's going on. Maybe kings. I really no idea. It's probably just a, a bad rig um, or a creative rig, let's say. I don't mean bad rig. I just mean someone that isn't. Man, I don't mean bad at all. Man, this is the GTO stuff inside of me. I see something unconventional and I'm just like, that's bad. But I don't mean that, guys. I don't mean that. It could be a great rig. It's creative as fuck. Uh, and we go for the old all in ski, repping any do sex so we can have. King deuce, queen deuce, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That's it, of the deuces. Also repping 4, 5 suited. And uh, I think the concept to take away from it is that you can, oh, it works, obviously. Um, and I, I didn't just pick hands that work, by the way, I just, I, I just went for random hands. Um, the concept takeaway, I guess, from this one is you can find spots, especially river raise spots, where it looks like that no one ever bluffs and it looks like you can't have any bluffs. If you can find those bluffs, I believe with absolute sincerity you can print. Um, however, do take heed this warning that this will not work against a lot of lower stakes and micro stakes players. Um, often if you're trying to rep a deuce, for instance, uh, on ace, deuce, deuce, they're just never going to believe you ever, 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 and they'll just call down with any ace. Um, something to be, yeah, like another example of that is, let's say the board is like 4-4 four, four, ace, and they have ace king. Sorry, 4-4-4 four, 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 ace, and they have ace king. Um, I used to do this thing where people was just not believe that you had quads, so it'd be like, there'd be like $2 on the river, and I'd shove just like $12, and you'd always just get snap called by an ace. I don't know if it's the same now, I don't know if people are a tiny bit more aware, but I, I reckon the recreational players at least are probably uh, still playing reasonably similar, similarly. Here we have 2-5 back in 2014 when I was a 500 zoom grinder. Uh, obviously got quite a big stack there. I used to play for like 30 something hours at a time and I would have some stimulant help. Do not recommend, but I had some um, speed help actually. Some very speedy help. And really sped up my brain you know <laughs> and yeah i used to get like 
between five, I got I got above a 10K stack a few times as well on uh, on 500 Zoom, which I, I was pretty happy with. Pretty fun, pretty regular actually it happens if I if I had those 30 hour sessions. So this is how big three bets used to be back in the day. This is obviously a bit small now for any 500 Zoom rigs watching, you're probably going near $55. However, this did the job. And it actually favored people who three bet a lot because you obviously get quite a cheap three bet for the same amount of, same-ish amount of fold equity. So uh, back in the day, it really suited people that three bet a lot and people that called a lot because they got better pot odds without really knowing they had that good pot odds. So we've got ace do suited. We're going to be C bet in here. Going to be folding out a lot of uh, overcards, maybe some ace queens, ace jacks, not some ace tens. Uh, but the important thing is we've got that backdoor flush draw. There's a lot of turns we can barrel. Um, there's also a lot of floats he might he might fold on the turn if we decide to barrel. So the king, very good. We can have king, queen, king, jack, king, 10. He can only have king, 10 suited. Uh, maybe of spades. I don't know if people are calling like king, 10 of king, 10 off suit. Maybe king, 10 with a club as well. Um, and so it suits us. So we're going to be barreling. He's calling at this point. We're going to put him on a range of something like a pair and a straight draw reasonably often, some flush draws. Um, probably not any slow play sets. I think a lot of people will just, just jam their sets on the turn or raise them on the flop. Um, he can still have some jack 10s in his range if he decides to go in that route. And on La Rive, we had three. I go for the check. He goes for the shot. And we go for the, hey, I believe you. I believe you're full of shit. Oh, owned. Yeah, hand slept for like 30 hours. It's probably the, the best kind of got him moment I had. But I like it. I really like it. I remember I, I remember stumbling across a 2 plus 2 forum where people with some other 500 zoom regs or some other people like 100 zoom regs were analyzing it being like, is this guy a genius or an idiot? And, you know, it's nice to be borderline. It's nice to not even know yourself. <laughs> But I, I think if you count the combinations of hands that he's shoving for value, it's actually very few. Um, he might be shoving something like king, queen of clubs. But even then, I, I just don't expect it to go all in when we could we could be checking ace, king on the river. Um, trying to induce. And then bluffs, he can have some ace, x of clubs, which I think would check back almost always. Um, and then he can have jack, tens, Maybe just Jackson of clubs, which is kind of scary, but he might just have Jackson hearts for lols. Um, and then he can have queen, queen jack clubs, queen 10 of clubs. Um, man, that's looking kind of it. But the thing is that when they have a small bluff range, but they don't really have a value range. And I, I guess I believe this specific player and I knew the player super well. I played hundreds of thousands of hands against more. I, I probably believe this super specific player would, would jam the turn with all his value hands. Um, yeah, I guess I guess I thought it was full of shit, and maybe it was lucky that he happened to have a block, but maybe it wasn't, you know. And in the long run, you, you get to find out with your win rate. This is my breakfast, by the way. It's got cacao, maca. I don't know if people get it. brain octane oil, collagen, um, coconut milk, the really fatty version, and almond milk, no cashew milk. And oh yeah, I think it's like a cow. But yeah, basically, very, very fatty, really good for the mornings, means you don't actually have to have breakfast. So, we're going on to a $2,000 tournament in May 2017. We're opening aces. Charlie, looks so easy to play aces. How can you play this creatively? Oh my god, he called out of position? No way, that's standard. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty standard. I mean, you could definitely get away with shoving against some people that don't have three bit bluff ranges in this spot, but people did back in the day, you know, of last year. So we go for a check call. Turn eight of clubs. Of course, we check our entire range. Oh my God, what's he done? Oh, that's crazy talk. That's not playing in the flow. Damn, damn it. Probably would have checked back the turn. Good to know. Um, probably would have, would have fought the river as well. Or like check back the river if I checked. Probably would have gone check check, yeah. And I really, really like this. I, I don't remember this hand at all, but I like that I did this. I think that the main thing to think about here is that I believe that he will call with his ace highs, with his ace kings and ace queens specifically. 
it really looks like we have something like queen 10 of clubs, king queen of clubs, maybe in like ace 10 of clubs if we decide to do that. And it just, yeah, I, I think from an exploits point of view, when I've seen recreational players do this and they call the flop versus smallish bear and then they just donk down the turn when there's a new draw, they almost always have a new draw. Um, and it looks like we could be doing this to try and fold out ace highs. I kind of wish he had ace high and called so I could be like, yeah, see, but you know. Tens, I think, is also another one of his hands. I mean, if he's calling tens, it's probably calling ace high. Tens might even be um, worse to call than ace high. In fact, I think it is. Depending on the blockers. So, moving on to Super Tuesday. Raising ace king. I freaked out for a second there. I was like, I don't remember this. But yeah, I do. It's a good one. It's a good one. Go for the old C bet. At this point, you really ought to, if you're not already, um, and you're playing tournaments, you really ought to be narrowing down your opponent's range severely. When they call off this stack size and it's a reg, you can make some really tight assumptions. He can have king queen suited. He can have maybe some queen jack suited, some ace jack suited, some uh, maybe probably not even ace queen. Some people can have ace queen off, ace queen suited maybe if they're really tight. Um, he can have. I don't know if he's if he's real loose. He can have ten nine suited, eight nine suited. It's really it's hard to say exactly, but it's a very narrow range. Uh, king ten suited as well. We go for the old bet, and this seems to remind me of the other hand that we played. Go for the old check. He goes for the old bet, repping ace jack specifically. Um, he might be repping king jack, but uh, for some reason it just doesn't feel like king jack would bet. And uh, we go for the old hey ya. And the reason for that is because there's king 10, ace 10, king queen of clubs, king 10, ace 10, king queen of spades. Six combinations. I might be forgetting queen 10 if he, if he has that in there as well. And then the only value hands he can have, well, if he has ace jack off, then there's a bunch. But if he only has ace jack suited, that's only two left because we cover diamonds and there's spades on the board. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good combinatrix call. Um, I don't know what GTO would say about that. I imagine it wouldn't agree with me, but theory sometimes disagrees with GTO. It sounds crazy, right? It sounds super crazy. I think all of these hands go my way. I promise, I swear on my life, I, uh, I just picked them randomly. It might be because I boom and share the hands that went well more back in the day, I don't know. Uh, this is a, another 2K. We go for a three bet, kind of semi buff, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, against this guy, isolated him. Go for the old C bet. Uh, the reason I, I C bet small on these boards is often because when a, a recreational player cold calls here, and it's almost always a recreational, it could be a rig, um, they have tens, jacks, ace king, ace queen, and then sometimes just some random garbage like ace jack off. Um, by betting small, you get to fold out all of his overcards that haven't got a flush draw. Um, pretty much always, they just really don't float in these kind of three wave spots in a three bet pot. Um, so when he calls, you're like, damn it, damn it. He must have been wrong. He probably has a set. Maybe not though. He goes to the old that size, could be tens. But at this point, not doing it. Uh, that wasn't that interesting. Take that one out. Here we have 2014. And shout out to, uh, I did a review of this whole session. I ended up winning $50,000 um, in one, one tabling, a 2550 session. It was uh, maybe like the third shot I ever took at 2550. And I one tabled it. At first, I battled OTP Red Baron and Will Hasher without knowing who they were um, because I was, I was only playing 2-5 zoom. I wasn't really following the high stakes at all. I didn't care about it. Um, and then a bunch of recreational players joined, including Top Doll, who I late to learn was Paul Newey. He goes for the three bout of the big blind. This is not a bluff, so you know. But we're playing deep stacked. We're playing over 200 big blinds deep against a recreational player who's three bet pretty small. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be raising the flop because okay if he's not bluffing and he's c-betting that his range is aces kings and ace king it's just it it's just it 
maybe some ace queen suited and they tend not to fold those two flush draws he goes for the old lead we snap jam because he don't want to slow roll, slow roll he goes for the old call off had to dodge just a couple of cards a few cards and uh twenty five thousand dollar pot is my biggest pot of my life at that point that's why i boomed it uh yeah it felt real good i remember how exciting that was it was yeah, I mean, when you're when you're playing like maximum like two thousand dollar pots or like four thousand dollar pots in two five zoom, and you get a twenty five k pot, and you get it in with that much equity. It feels good, man. It feels good. It's a good session. Went out celebrating afterwards in Brighton. Ended up waking up in some random dude's house after I ended up going back to his house after I think telling him not to like hit on a girl. Because he was being like super outrageously perverted, man. This is a weird flashback. It's the first time I've had this memory, I think, for a long time. And then he was like, mate, you know, you're right. And then we talked and then we went back and got high and played FIFA. Yeah, I'm glad those days are behind me. But ah, uh, this one, all right. 2013, first time I've ever played a $1,000 tournament. And this is how fucked GTR was back in the day. So it goes open, we call 10 9 suited, pretty standard ish. Um, three bet call call pretty standard six five four flush draw he bets and at this point what can he have he can have an over pair at best right maybe ace king suited we go for the old min plus raise and yes yes i love it what are we repping we're repping sixes fives fours and maybe some flush draws flush draws also, if he does happen to be over, uh, C-betting over cards here, he does have to fold it. Um, I would not make this play now. I have my image, but this is, I, I just really love how fuck GTO was. And this, this sparked some big debates back in the day when uh, I was like, hey guys, what do you think of his hand? To, to like a Grips Facebook chat or something. And everyone was like, oh, I don't like it. But looking back, I think it's actually really good. Um, obviously, uh, this turn, he could have kings, he could have aces with a spade, um, but I would be also be shoving the river. He can also have aces without a spade, which I think has to fold. Um, he can have queens with or without a spade, but I, I, I think by betting the turn small, get to shove the river, and I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I just really like seeing, seeing fuck GTO plays no matter who it is. I really enjoy it when people send me hands saying fuck, fuck GTO, I'll, I'll, I'll look at you know, probably like half of the hands that people send me, even if I don't apply to them, all of them. And I think that these are the kind of situations where you get to just have some fun. You get to experiment, see what works. And I genuinely believe, maybe not now against the best players, but still against some pretty good players, people are going to be folding a huge proportion of their range by the time you get to the river. And it just looks like we're never, ever bluffing. And... I hope that people try this at home on some smaller stakes than they usually play. Find out what works, find out what doesn't work, and just try and find those situations where you're bluffing and no one else is bluffing because they do exist no matter what theory says, no matter what the high stakes players say, they still exist in the super high rollers. So many of them, there are spots that people aren't bluffing. Um, so they're definitely going to be existing on 1K to 100%, so definitely going to be existing on whatever stakes you guys are playing as well. So. Peace. I'm gonna go do my day.